Well, we are here at Hannings Trains at the TCA Eastern Division York Meet, and we have Harry Hanning the second. Is that what you call yourself? Junior. So we have Harry Hanning Junior, who you very rarely see uh, on the Train Shop Weekly Show. So we decided to go ahead and interview Harry. So what can you tell us about your history with the TCA? The TCA, I joined in 1966, and uh, I joined basically to acquire some of the trains that my dad, who had a shop, he started in 1939, had piling up in the store. The, uh, my wife and I, when we first got married in 1964, we used to go down to Philadelphia and I had a senator down there who had a lot of trains and a lot of trains donated to him. We would buy a car load at a time, bring them home and I would go out to some of the train meets selling and I was keeping the best for my own collection naturally. Then in 1968 we went to buy our first house. So at the time, uh, TCA was running their shows out at the Guernsey Pavilion on Route 30 here in Lancaster. And that was a Friday and Saturday only show. On Friday, I sold just about everything I had brought, and then I would drive home and pick up the rest of it, come back Saturday, whatever we didn't sell, the TCA would send an auctioneer around, table to table, if you wanted to auction something out, that was fine and damn. So, we did this several times, buying two different houses at two different times, coming up with the money over the weekend to make settlement on Monday. Okay. So, we, we did very good in that respect. Uh, <laughs> other than that, why uh, we've been buying, selling, trading, doing restorations, manufacturing parts. Oh yes. We had over 865 parts between model engineering works and our paint line and Lionel's uh, giving us permission to use their name and logo on some of our parts, like a transformer TW handles and uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, every year we've been delving deeper and deeper into reproduction parts. And I'm still here, 79 years old. I don't know how much longer. <laughs> I enjoy it. That's good. And I have both my sons in following my footsteps too, and both grandsons. So I hope we would be around for a while. So you got a great family business going, and uh, offering a lot of different services, trains for sales, you got a great layaway plan too for those who can't afford everything all at one shot. I mean, it's nice that you offer all this to everybody. That started as in 1939, so in uh, 2024 will be our 85th year old and we're the oldest family owned train shop in the United States. Wow. So is this your original train store that you're at no, now? No. We were across the street in my dad's basement to start with. And then we built a garage behind the house. And that was 1955, and 1957 was my first store in the garage. Oh! Pop says it, it was a, a two-door overhead garage door. We put the boat in there and the car in there. Right. And what we did, we kicked the car out, left the boat in sectioned it off in my, my little eight foot by ten foot room, which I sold HO, Dad sold the big trains. Oh wow. Uh, later, I needed more room, Pop says, you can afford it. He says, you tear out the garage doors, 
we put in a, uh, a showroom window. One of my neighbors up the street was a contractor, and I paid him out of my own pocket. We put an oleum floor down on it. I bought some used showcases, and uh, I was in business then. I outgrew that and moved up to Hatfield in 1975. We were up there for three years and moved down to Lansdale and Main Street. Okay. We outgrew that. In 1985, we moved into our current location. Wow. So on Line Street, we've been in there 20, 35, 37 years now. Wow. Uh, on the same little area, you know, right. probably within about six, seven blocks. <laughs> That's, that's about it, Ken. All right, thank you for this interview, uh, Harry, and uh, we'll catch you uh, later. Thank you. And make sure you guys visit Hennings Trains, Lansdale on Lion Street. You guys see my video tours of there. I've been there several times. Great family-owned store, great products. Uh, you need restoration parts, paint, whatever, visit Hennings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. There's Walt of the uh, Train Shop Weekly Show. Oh, it's Mr. Conroe himself. Yeah, so I got a question for you. So why did you create a Reading caboose on your challenge when you know that Conroe took Reading over? Because <laughs> one, Conroe never had a little bobber caboose. Conroe wasn't around long enough to have a bobber caboose. <laughs> Let's see, what, Conroe lasts, what, 30 years? I think Reading was like 150, you know? But, you know, Conroe never lasts as long as Reading. Well, well, technically speaking, you still have Conroe shared assets. And, and what do you call, you want to be technically speaking, <laughs> the Reading Company is still alive. Well, that is well. true. They might not be into the railroads, but they're still around. <laughs> I just I believe they're they're a movie theater company. A movie theater company. In Australia. Okay. I believe that's where their holdings are at. <laughs> but yes. Reading company's still around. Conrail. So that would make like running like almost two hundred years getting close to two hundred years being around. Yeah, nineteen thirty three I believe. Eight excuse me, eighteen thirty three is when the Reading Company was started. Okay. Conrail? Uh, Conrail was just, well, the government got into that. So, uh, <laughs> well, somebody had to bail you guys out. <laughs> no, that was that, was that was that sad merger that the government left, <laughs> left of Penn Central and New York Central. <laughs> yeah, it was. Or, excuse me, I'm sorry, Pennsylvania and right. New York Central. Right. See, they did not allow that to happen again when Santa Fe... And, and Southern Pacific wanted to merge. The commerce shot that down. Was it Sam? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a good article on it. Uh, there's a good YouTube video on it about it. Because there was like, with the Santa Fe uh, Southern Pacific merger, they had like um, like almost 200 engines painted. Because that's why you see some have just the SP. Okay. And some just, just have, have the, the SF. Yeah. So when the merger came, all they do is had to slap the... The rest of it on her. Yeah, the other two letters on it. It's kind of, kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, a lot of valuable information on yeah. YouTube. You even get to find you there, too. <laughs> hey, Walt. Guess what? What? I got something for you. Quick. So, here we go. I'm going to present it to you on video. And what am I going to do with this? Well, it, it shows you all the running lines that were actually taken over. Oh, really? Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> well, I, it was a nice gesture, but I think you'd better be better in your hands. Oh, oh, okay. Than in my hands. <laughs> Here, in case you need to make some adjustments. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. We, we could just cross that out. <laughs> oh, no. And S. <laughs> slash CSX, See but, but because you know, <laughs> Conrail only made it 30 years, 30 
short. Case. But I just wanted you to see where the, the Conrail took over the, the Reading line. I, I know where Conrail. <laughs> I've been around long enough to know that. <laughs> but it's a shame Conrail didn't last as long as the Reading Company did. Well, they did their but job. Then again, but then again, then again, the Reading Company still exists to this day. <laughs> Might not be in rail transportation, but. Well, I have a couple friends that actually work for Conroe Shared Assets, so basically they're still around too. They'll never make a hundred years. <laughs> we'll see. I think actually when it was 1933, that's good, I was coming up to 200 years of the running company. Yeah, but Conroe did its job, they bailed you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason there was Conrail is because the federal government let <laughs> Pennsylvania and New York Central merge with a disaster that was. Oh, uh, that was a disaster, but you know what? And, it, and it hurts the rest of the region air rail but, lines. But on the serious side, though, Penn Central actually is becoming really popular in people wanting them in the model railroad world. It's the age. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like 60, from 68. I mean, it only lasted like, what, four years? Something like that, but still. I mean, like, there was a custom run made by Mr. Muffins. He made the two Penn Central locomotives. He said they sold immediately. He told, he was telling me that line. I was actually trying to talk him out of doing them but <laughs> because they wouldn't sell, but they actually sold out. Oh, yeah, it's just like, you know, you always see Conor Wendell's floating around on the shelves. But you know one engine you you never see really floating around too long. What's that? Reading engines. <laughs> they don't. They don't stick around on the shelves very long. They don't stick around. No, you go in here and probably find 10, 10, 20 Conroe engines. How many Reading engines are you gonna find? Not that many. Well, how do you know that people aren't buying the Reading engines only to make an overstamp Conroe locomotive out of them? Well, not, <laughs> not as More people are much brighter than you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I busted on him enough.